Hi, today we're going to be talking about clearing fractions and clearing decimals in an equation. Although you can solve an, any equation without clearing the fractions or decimals, it makes it a lot easier if you do clear them. So usually you would look at all of the denominators of the fractions and multiply the entire equation by the least common multiple. In this case, um, with an equation like this, we only have three. Three is the only fraction denominator, and therefore it's going to be easy to pick it as the thing to multiply. Now, we need to distribute the three to each of the terms. And in order to do this correctly, you have to know what the terms are. I've gone ahead and highlighted each of those. Those are all separate. Each of these is going to get the three distributed to it. 3 times x over 3, if I were to do some work off to the side, it's 3 over 1 times x over 3. The 3's cancel out, and you're left with just x over 1, which is just x. So this first term is going to be x. Next term is 3 times x, which is 3x. Last term is 3 times 4, which is 12. I want to get all of my variables to the same side. doesn't really matter what side you pick, but I know it has to be the opposite side of the 12, so I'm going to leave the 12 there. Subtract both sides by 3x. x minus 3x is negative 2x. And then on the right-hand side, the 3x minus 3x goes away, and I'm left with 12. Divide both sides by negative 2, and I have x equals negative 6. Box your answer. The instructions on this page do say to verify your solution. When you're verifying with the check, you're not allowed to use the version of the equation that already has the variable cleared. You have to go back to the original, I didn't mean the variable cleared, I'm sorry, the fraction cleared. You have to go back to the original equation before you cleared the fraction and substitute in that answer there. So um, I'm going to be checking that negative 6 divided by 3 has the same answer as negative 6 plus 4. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Those do equal each other, so it is correct. We don't want to use the cleared version of the equation, this version right here. Although it would be, would be easier, maybe I made a mistake in my first step, in which case negative 6 could be the correct answer for my new equation, but it's not necessarily the correct answer for the original equation. Please pause the video and try the other three problems. Make sure to check your answers. All right, hopefully you've come back to the video now and you're ready to try the next page. This page is very similar, except it has decimals instead of fractions. With decimals, you're always going to be um, using powers of 10 to clear. And you choose the biggest power of 10 that you need in order to make all the decimals go away. In this problem, I have a 10th place there and a 10th place there. Since I only have 10, 10 places, I only need one swoop on each of those. So I'm going to be multiplying the whole thing by 10. If one of them had had a decimal to the hundredth place, like 1.86, then I'd be multiplying it by 100 because that would be the biggest number I would need to get rid of the decimals. So um, I'm going to be distributing 10 to each of the terms. Again, it's important to know what each of the terms is. 2w is a term. Negative 0.4 is a term. 1 is a term. Plus 1.8w is a term. These are my four terms. Terms are usually separated by pluses and minuses. That's the easiest way to tell them apart. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 10 out to each of these. 10 times 2w is 20w. You just multiply 2 times 10, stick the w on there. Negative 0.4 times 10, I do one swoop, so it's going to be negative 4. 1 times 10 is 10. 1.8, I need one swoop, and that's going to be 18w. It doesn't really matter what side you put the, frac the uh, variables on and what side you put the constants on. But I see if I bring the negative 4 to this side, I'm going to get a positive answer. And if I bring the 18 to this side, I'm going to get a positive answer. And I prefer positives. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. That's going to give me 20w, 4s cancel out, equals 14 plus 18w. 
and I'm going to subtract 18w from both sides. That's going to give me 2w equals 14. Divide both sides by 2, and I have w equals 7. Box your answer. So um, now, again, it says verify the solution. So in order to do this check, I need to use the original equation, not the new equation, after uh, getting rid of the decimals. So 2w minus 0 0.4 equals 1 plus 1.8w. I'm going to be substituting in my 7. So 2 times 7 minus 0 0.4 equals 1 plus 1 1.8 times 7. 2 times 7 is 14 minus 0 0.4 and uh, oops, plus sign and 1.8. I know that 18 times 7 is equal to tw uh, 126. So swooping back 1 on 126 is going to give me 12.6. 14 minus 0 0.4 is going to be 13.6. You could do work off to the side if you need to. 1 plus 12.6 is also 13.6, so that did work out. Go ahead and pause the video and try the other three problems on this page. All right, welcome back. On the last page, um, it is a little bit more challenging to see what the different terms are here. I'm actually going to use example C for my um, explanation because that one shows a lot of the different steps you need to take. So first step is you really have to identify the terms. One term is all of this. 3y plus 2, although 3y and 2 are different terms in general, they're together in the parentheses, which groups them. So you can't think about them at different terms as different terms until the parentheses are gone. And then 1.8 is being multiplied by that, by, that by, by that parentheses, which groups it into the same term since there's not a plus sign after the 1.8 or a minus sign. 1.8 is being multiplied, so it's the same term. By the same logic, this whole thing is going to be one term. But then I do have a plus sign separating out this one half, no parentheses, that's a separate term. Think of the parentheses like a gate. You can't touch the parentheses until they're gone. So I don't even care what's in the parentheses right now. I'm focusing on the one eighth, I can get to that. On the one fourth, I can get to that. And on the one half, I can get to that. That one, so the one half inside the parentheses, I'm not thinking about yet. The GC, their LCM of one eighth, one fourth, and one half, um, the denominators of those is eight. So I'm going to be distributing out an eight to each of these terms. The way that it's going to look is eight times one eighth times parentheses 3y plus 2 equals 8 times 1 fourth times parentheses 2y plus 1 half plus 8 times 1 half. So then I'm going to go through and clear those fractions. On the first one, I have 8 times 1 eighth. That's just going to go away. That's going to be 1. The 8s will cancel out. So I have a 1 on the outside of my parentheses, which means I can just ignore it. So 3y plus 2. And actually, the parentheses are now gone on that. So 3y plus 2. 8 times 1 fourth is 2. It reduces to 2 and 1. So I still have parentheses there because it didn't uh, fully clear yet. Plus 8 times 1 half is 4. So I still need to... Um, Solve the parentheses in my next step. 3y plus 2 equals 4y plus 1 half of 2 is 1 plus 4. Now I can go ahead and um, finish combining like terms on both sides. So I have 3y plus 2 equals 4y plus 5. I'm um, going to choose to um, subtract 3y from both sides. That's going to keep my y's positive, and I really like having a positive variable. So 2 equals y 
plus 5. Now subtract 5 from both sides, and you get negative 3 equals y, box your answer. It does say to verify your solution at the top of the page, so you would go through and do a check. Remember, the check has to come from the original equation. So check is going to be 1 eighth times 3y plus 2 equals 1 fourth times 2y plus 1 half plus another 1 half. And my answer was negative 3. So 1 eighth times 3 times negative 3 plus 2 equals 1 fourth times 2 times negative 3 plus 1 half plus another 1 half. So here, we don't have variables inside the parentheses anymore, so I can use order of operations. On the left-hand side, I'm going to be starting with this multiplication because it's inside the parentheses. So 1 eighth times negative 9 plus 2. And I'm just going to keep solving this side, then come back to the other side. That's just an easier way to think about it so your brain's not switching back and forth. Negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7 times 1 eighth. 1 eighth times negative 7 is negative 7 eighth. Not a pretty number. So who knows if the other side's going to work out. I hope it does. 2 times negative 3 is going to be my starting point there. So 1 fourth times that's going to be negative 6 plus 1 half plus another 1 half. Now I'm going to do my the rest of my parentheses. Negative 6 plus 1 half is negative 5 and a half times 1 fourth plus 1 half. Negative 5 and a half times 1 fourth I'm going to do off to the side. I'm running out of room here, so I'll do it above. 1 fourth times 5 and a half is going to be 11 halves. Um, so none of that's going to cancel out. So 11 eighths which is the same as 1 and 3 eighths. I have 1 and 3 eighths plus 1 half. Do the work off to the side again. 1 and 3 eighths plus 4 eighths. And I forgot my negative. Whoops, go back a step. That's a negative. I was thinking that's not going to work out. Back up one step. So I forgot the negative on that. Put the negative on now. Now they're different signs, so I need to subtract. Um, 1 and 3 eighths minus 4 eighths, which is the same as 1 half, and borrow from that, and that does equal 7 eighths. Bigger one is negative, so negative 7 eighths. It did work out. That's awesome. I don't have to start the video recording over, that means. All of this did go with one problem, so I'm going to shrink it all, put it next to that problem I just did, even though the arrows and the highlighting will be off, that's okay. So pause the video, try the other three problems on this page, and good luck.